Welcome back everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I will introduce uh, what is an order of an element inside the groups. Okay. So, then later once we get familiar with this order, then I will introduce uh, what is called cyclic groups and then I will give various characterization of cyclic groups. Okay, let us begin. So, let us start with uh, finite group and then we proved uh, one result. So, let us recall that about finite group. If G is a finite group and A is an element in G. So, then we proved that there exist R in N such that A power R is identity. So, this is something uh, we already proved. So, this is a fact. So, the way we proved it so, you look at this set A, A square, A cube and so on. So, this is supposed to be a subset of G. So, since so this looks like having infinitely many elements, but uh, being a subset of G, this has to be finite. So, the fact that this set is finite actually gives us R such that A power R is identity. Okay. So, this is something uh, we already seen. So, now uh, this actually somewhat motivates us to actually uh, look for uh, smallest r such that uh, a power r is identity. So, that is the definition of order of an element. Okay. So, now start with a general group G. So, let us start with G being just a general group okay, not necessarily finite just a group and take one element x and g. Okay. Assume that there exist r such that x power r is identity. So, then then order of x is defined to be minimum of all such. So, minimum of r in r n such that x power r is identity. Okay. If such no r exists, okay. So, this is the definition of order. So, what is the, I will make a remark. So, you will uh, define the order to be infinity, the order of x to be infinity or plus infinity if there exists no such r, r in n such that x power r is identity. Okay. So, order of x is in particularly finite if there exist r such that x power r is identity. So, if there is no such r such that x power r is identity then you define it to be infinite. Okay. So, here is an important observation uh, about the order okay, that actually comes from a divisional algorithm. Okay. Suppose assume that uh, x is in G such that order of x equal to some n which is finite. Okay. So, in case if we have x power d equal to identity for some d for some d in n. So, this is some other d uh, natural number such that x power d equal to identity. So, then what one can prove? We can prove that this order of x that is n must divide this d. Okay. So, this is you can call it a lemma. So, how one proves this? So, here is the proof. So, we just use division algorithm. Whenever you see a statement that says one number is dividing another number, then you simply use division algorithm to prove that. Okay. So, first of all uh, from division algorithm uh, this order of x dividing d is equivalent to proving the remainder to be 0 when you divide d by order of x. So, let us uh, use division algorithm. So, using division algorithm, we know that there exists unique q and r in e z such that this d equal to q times order of x 
plus r where r satisfies r greater than or equal to 0 less than this order of x ok. So, now what we can do we can just simply compute the power of uh, x ok using this equation. So, if you compute the power you can see that x power d is same as x power order of x times q times x power d. Note that x power d is identity that is what given. So, x power d is identity by the definition of order of x we know that x power order of x is identity. So, x power d identity and x power order of x identity. So, this gives us identity equal to x power sorry identity power q times x power d. So, this you get from this equation. So, you take 1 substitute 2 in 1. So, then that implies identity equal to x power d. So, that implies x power sorry x power r. So, I call this remainder to be r. So, that implies x power r is identity. So, now note that what is the property of r. So, r is some non-negative numbers less than order of x, but by definition of order of x it is the minimum positive natural number such that x power r is identity. So, that means this r has to be 0 ok. So, that proves that uh, this order of x must divide d. So, now using this lemma you can actually immediately uh, write down this corollary. So, this actually gives another definition of order. So, you fix x in g such that order of x is finite. So, then what one can prove order of x is nothing but minimum of those d dash inside n such that x power d dash is identity and d dash is dividing d ok. So, you also assume that uh, x power d is identity for some d in n. Okay. So, basically what we are trying to say. So, since you know that x is x is having a finite order. So, there exists some natural number such that x power d is identity. So, if you are able to find one such natural number then uh, to actually find out order of x. So, all you need to do is take all possible devices of that d and then such that x power d dash becomes identity ok. So, so basically to look for this order of x you can only uh, look at only the finitely many devices of d such that x power d dash is identity. Then if you pick smallest among them then that will be the order ok. So, this is immediate uh, from the definition. So, why because so from the lemma we can easily see that uh, if you call this minimum to be let us say k. So, then x power k being identity will imply that order of x is less than or equal to k because order of x is the smallest number such that x power order of x is identity. So, now since uh, x power k is actually sorry x power order of x is identity. So, and that would imply that sorry x power d is identity x power d is identity and that would imply that order of x divides d. So, that means this k has to be less than or equal to order of x because k is the smallest divisor such that x power k is identity and k divides d. So, then if you put them together you can see that order of x must be equal to k. So, basically this corollary tells you that once you know for some power x power d is identity then to find out order of x you can only look at the devices of the d and then uh, such that that x power d dash is identity take the smallest among them ok. So, now uh, let us see some more properties of this uh, uh, order ok. 
So now uh, again uh, let us start with some x in g such that order of x is finite. Okay. So now uh, we can actually take all other powers of x and then see what happens to them. Okay. So since x power uh, r is identity for some r because r of x is finite. So, that would immediately implies that if you take any other power of x that also will be having finite order okay? that is immediate. So, in particularly what will be the order of some power of x. So, if I take some x power d and then the order of x power d will be exactly equal to order of x divided by the GCD between R of X comma T. Okay. So, let us prove this. So, let us start with the right hand side and then we will in increase the power of X power D by that and then see what happens. So, you take X power D and then increase by R of X divided by GCD of R of X comma D. So, then this can be rewritten as X power d divided by g c d of r of x comma d times r of x. Since g c d of r of x comma d also divides d, so this will be some natural number. So, if you replace this order of x power d divided by g c d of order of x comma d, then you get this is exactly, so this becomes identity, so identity power something, so this is identity. Okay. So, here I am using this fact that x power m power m dash is same as x power m dash power m. So, this is something we seen about exponential notation. Okay. So, there is no problem with this. So, now you can see that order of x power d definitely should divide. So, order of x power d definitely should divide this uh, order of x divided by g c d of order of x comma d. In particularly it is smaller than the right hand side number. So, now uh, what happens? So, we want to prove that. So, this is the exactly the order. Okay. So, there is nothing else actually smaller than this divides. So, let us call this order of x power d to be k okay. and then see what happens. So, now if you call that k then x power d power k becomes identity. So, now you can see that x power d k is identity. So, now this implies that order of x must divide d k. So, now from this it is easy to see from elementary number theory this is something I already proved. So, order of x divided by g c d of order of x comma d should divide d k divided by order of sorry g c d of order of x comma d. Okay. So, because this implies this order of x divides d k will imply d k equal to r times order of x. So, now you can divide this g c d of order of x comma d by both sides. So, then you get d divided by g c d of order of x comma d k equal to r into order of x divided by g c d of order of x comma d. Since this is an integer, this is an integer. So, that tells you that order of x divided by g c d of r of x comma d divides d k divided by g c d of r of x comma d. So, now note that this g c d of this r of x divided by g c d of r of x comma d comma d divided by g c d of r of x comma d. So, this is relatively prime. So, now using this Euclid's lemma you can see that this number must divide k. Okay. So, that means, so this implies order of x divided by g c d of order of x comma k uh, sorry r of x comma d must divide k. But already we got that k is actually uh, yeah k divides 
R of x divided by GCD of R of x comma d. So, that means k is smaller than this. So, now we have proved the other way R of x divided by GCD of R of x comma d divides k both are non-negative integers. So, that forces that k must be equal to so which is nothing but R of x d R of x divided by GCD of R of x comma d. Okay. So, this is just again uses uh, the facts that we proved uh, in elementary number theory. Okay. So, here is an immediate corollary. So, in case d divides n, okay, if d divides n where n is order of x, so then it is immediate that order of x power d must be equal to n divided by d. So, why? Because the GCD of n comma d will become d. Okay. So, it is immediate. So, now let us look at what happens if order of x is infinite. So, if order of x equal to infinity, so then it is not hard to see the order of x power d must be infinity for all d in n. Okay. So, why it is the case? Because if order of x power d is either it is finite or infinite. Okay. If it is finite, so then what will happen? Then there exists r such that x power d power r is identity, but that would imply that if x power d power r is identity, then that would imply that x power r d is identity. So, that would imply that r of x is also finite, okay? but that gives you contradiction. So, that proves that if r of x is infinity, then r of x power d must be infinity for all powers. Okay. So, now uh, let us look at what happens if we take product of two elements. Okay. This is also very important uh, 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 important thing to understand. So, if I start with two elements, okay, let us assume G to be a group. Okay. So, you start with two elements A comma B and G. So, then is there anything that we can say about the product a b? The thing is uh, we cannot really say any much about uh, the order of a b in the general group g. Okay? So, I will state a theorem which I will not prove it now maybe because it requires some sophisticated language for example, finite fields and uh, this uh, matrix groups over finite field and all. But uh, I will tell you like what group is involved in the proof, but it is again like it is not too deep proof or anything, but the fact is actually very, very important fact. So, what this theorem says, okay, if you start with any integers, so what, what we are interested in understanding, okay, let us say you have two elements a, b inside g such that order of a is m and order of b is n. Okay. So, now the question is what can you say about order of a b? Can we say anything? Okay. For example, definitely order of a b can go down very much. For example, if a is b is just a inverse and m equal to n. Okay. So, then the product a b will become identity. So, then order of a b will becomes 1. So, it can go very much down. But the thing is, uh, can it be very arbitrary? So, that is the question that we are asking. Under some circumstances, it cannot be arbitrary. Okay. For example, one such case is if order of, sorry, if A, A and B commutes, then at least we can say that order of A, B must divide the LCM of order of A, order of B. Okay. That is something we can conclude if A, B commutes. But if A, B does not commute, then we do not have any handling. Okay, That is what uh, this theorem says. So, for any integers m, n, r which are greater than or equal to 1. So, there exists a finite group G with elements a comma b in g such that order of a 
can be m order of b can be n and order of a b can be just r so there there are no relations between the order of a order of b and order of ab so that is what this uh, theorem says so basically the group will be something like sl2 fq modulo plus or minus identity this modulo plus or minus identity is not that important but anyway so this finite field fq is what important so you have to choose a q very cleverly such a way that uh, you set up this group sl2 fq modulo plus or minus 5 and you can construct some matrices 2 by 2 matrices a and b uh, satisfying these properties that we have told okay so this is actually known result in the literature so this maybe i will i give this proof of this uh, later okay so i will outline little bit about finite field and then we will come to this later but now what i want to do i want to say what we can say under some circumstances about order of ab so one thing that we can say if ab equal to ba so then order of ab must divide lcm of order of a and order of b okay and that is easy you call this lcm l then if you raise ab power l if you show that ab power l is identity then you are done but since a and b commutes then ab power l is same as a power l b power l since l is multiple of a as well as multiple of b you can see that a power l must be identity as well as b power l is identity so l is some k times order of a so it is some k times order of a similarly l is some k dash times order of b okay so that tells you that uh, both the powers are identity so that means a b power l is identity so order of a b must divide the lcm so now uh, further if you assume this uh, order of a order of b both are relatively prime then you can definitely say what will be the order of a b okay so let's let's uh, look at that so you assume again a b is b a and g c d of order of a order of b you are seen to be 1 then what we can say so then we can prove that order of a b is exactly equal to order of a times order of b so as before we call this order of a m and then order of a n so then order of a b we want to show it is m n so we already shown that uh, so order of a times order of b is nothing but lcm of order of a order of b because gcd is 1 so that means a b power this order of a times order of b is identity okay that means order of a b divides this so no issue so now we want to show that if you call this is d okay then this d must be more than this order of a order of b so let us see how to prove so we know that a b power d is identity because a b order of a b is d so now this implies a power d b power d is identity because a b commutes okay so this can be again rewritten a power d equal to b power minus d okay now if you take order of a on both side then a power d times order of a is equal to b time minus d times order of b now you can see that a power order of a is identity so the left hand side becomes identity so that means b power d order of b sorry order of a is identity so that would immediately imply order of b divides d times order of a but note that the gcd between order of a order of b it is 1 so they do not have any common factors so that means order of b must divide d okay from this so now similar argument again will show because a power d is equal to b power minus d now you raise it power 
order of b. So, then what happens? So, a power d order of b will become identity. So, that will show that order of a divides d times order of b because order of a order of b both are relatively prime that will imply that order of a divides d. So, now what we proved? We proved order of a divides d, order of b divides d. Now, since order of a order of b both are relatively primes, so that means the product also should divide. So, this is again we proved using Clutes lemma. So, that means d must be greater than or equal to r of a r of b. So, but already we proved that d must be at least r of a r of b. So, that will imply that d equal to r of a r of b. Okay. So, this indeed says uh, like uh, what happens under some particular circumstances uh, what happens to the order of a b. So, when order of a and b commutes and the order of a order of b they are relatively prime then you can guarantee that order of a b equal to order of a times order of b. So, like I said if you take a equal to b in, uh, sorry b equal to a inverse then a b will become identity. Okay. The order can drop down very much. So, you have to be very careful. So, now uh, let us see like uh, how many elements uh, you will have inside okay, uh, given a group. So, let us start with some element okay, let us say g and then there is this x such that order of x is finite. So, then we can look at this subgroup generated by x. Okay. So, this let us call this r of x is n. So, then you know that the number of elements in this subgroup generated by x that must be exactly n. Okay. This must be identity x, x square etcetera x power n minus 1. So, why? Because if there is some power x power i equal to x power j with i less than j and then like between 0 and n minus 1 then what will happen then x power j minus i will become identity. But j minus i both are smaller than n so that will force that this this is greater than or equal to 1 and then less than n which is a contradiction because n is the smallest number such that x power order of x is identity. So, so we cannot get any smaller power of x such that x power that is identity. Okay. So, that indeed says the elements identity x, x square and, and so on x power n minus 1 they are all distinct inside G. So, that proves that the cardinality of the subgroup generated by x is exactly the order of x which is here. Okay. So, now what happens if you take order of x is infinity? If you take order of x equal to infinity, then you can see that the subgroup generated by x. So, this, this must be having all these elements identity x plus or minus 1, x plus or minus 2 and so on. So, you have the positive exponential x, x square and so on. Similarly, their inverses x inverse x power minus 2 and so on. So, this must be there inside this uh, subgroup. So, now my our claim, uh, claim that all these elements are distinct. Okay. So, that means there is a one to one correspondence between Z and this. Okay. So, this is inside G. So, the cardinality of this is also infinite that is what I want to say. So, why that is true? Suppose let us say you have x power i equal to x power j again now i j can be integers. Okay. So, without loss of generality you can assume that i less than or equal to j. If i equal to j then there is nothing to say. So, for some distinct i j let us say x power i equal to x power j. So, then what happens similarly as before x power j minus i becomes identity. Okay. But j minus i is non-zero because you assume to be j is greater than i. 
so it is non-zero. So that means there exist. So so this also becomes actually positive. Okay, j minus i becomes positive. So there exist some natural numbers such that x power j minus i equal to identity. So that forces that order of x is finite. But you have started with order of x infinite, which is a contradiction. So that tells you that these elements identity x plus or minus 1, x plus or minus 2 and so on they are all distinct okay. This is you can rewrite as x power j dash j dash in integers okay. So that means this group generated by uh, x that has infinitely many elements okay. So basically we will define a group is cyclic if it is generated by one element like this okay. So in, in the next class uh, I will use all these properties that I proved uh, and then uh, understand what are all the cyclic groups and then more about uh, cyclic groups. I will stop here we are running out of time I will, I will continue in the next class. Thank you.